We're live. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to tonight's network meeting. Uh, we are messing about. I'm going to say messing about because I can't say trialing or practicing. We're messing about some new software while we're doing this one tonight. So fingers crossed, everything's going to go to plan and not do something strange. I'm looking over the, the, the screen here to just check the husband's face as I'm, I'm saying these words. Anyway, tonight I am delighted to welcome Keen Braganza, who is um, a, uh, from CasType. I've known CasType for quite a few years now. We met at a conference in Nottingham, which is of course my local area, and uh, he showed me his touch typing software. And we talked about how it had been um, approved by the BDA for, for dyslexic students to support them. Um, but he's going to talk to us tonight about how we can use touch typing to support learners with SEND and also to tell us a little bit about what else CASType has been approved for. So I'm going to pass over to Keen. Just give us a second, Keen, while we work out where the microphone is. Oh. Done. There you go, Keen. <laughs> no problem. Wonderful. Am, am I there? Am I live? Oh, uh, firstly, I just want to say thank you very much for attending and thank you ve very much to our sensible Senko, uh, who's uh, very much one of my favourite Senkos. So thank you very much for, for giving us the opportunity to uh, showcase CAS to everyone and to uh, explain uh, why touch typing is so important. Uh, in, in terms of uh, SEND. Uh, well, just so that you're aware, um, the, the CAS software has been available and supporting the SEND uh, market for the past 20 odd years, very much sold into the DSA sector and the schools literally around the world. And coming back into why touch typing skills can help, we actually as a company have listened we get a lot of uh, feedback from senkos from assessors from teachers and we have actually listened we've taken uh, the questions that you'll have asked the queries and actually dropped it into the software we want to make a software which is inclusive and really does uh, make a difference to to students in the classroom so going back to why touch typing skills uh, are so important well as you all are aware, it can help the challenges which impact the writing process. And, you know, touch typing is so important because, as you can see from, from this little uh, guide here, it's an essential life skill. It really does level the playing field for all students. It can massively increase their productivity. And, and obviously, from a point of view of exam situations, it can actually be used in an, an exam environment. Uh, a lot of students with assist assistive technology 
uh, are allowed the use of computers and you know rather than just the one line two line answers they can actually you know uh, give the answer correctly um what i'd really like you to understand and and, and be aware of uh, in terms of typing and or touch typing when students or individuals uh use all Oh, oh, sorry, I've actually gone on uh, on screen too far. Uh, when students actually type with just two fingers or a few fingers, uh, if they're either dictating or using a scribe or speaking whilst using speech recognition software, they're actually using their, sub their conscious mind. So in effect, they're thinking as they do. So once they've actually learned to touch type uh, using all the digits, the actual skill is automatized and moves into the subconscious. So that leaves the conscious mind free to think and concentrate on just you know, simple things such as planning, composing, processing, proofreading, and, ed and editing. And what it does is it increases productivity and workflow. So think of it like learning to drive a car. You know, if, to start with, you're shifting the gears, you're looking in your wing mirrors, you're, you're doing everything. But then within a very short uh, a period of time, you're actually driving and um, you know, using the car while you're talking, while you listen to the radio, et cetera, et cetera. It's just automatized. And that is the, the really important thing, what we're trying to do with touch typing. And it's not hard because let, let's remember, we're only using a keyboard and it's just learning a keyboard. So if you can play the piano, uh, touch typing just becomes very, very natural and easy thing to do. So what differences can impact the writing process? Well, we have dyslexia, ADA. ADHD, ASD, all these um, differences which you can actually see on the screen. And, you know, they, they all affect children in, in various ways. Now, the challenges they, uh, they come across are, for example, slow work rate, visual disturbances, possibly poor working memory, um, cognitive limitations, and also difficulties with, with verbal and nonverbal communication. Uh, and another uh, issue which uh, you know it's, we do come across is you know perfectionism where students have poor and untidy handwriting and are constantly are very very aware of that so learning to touch type and the use of the computer can uh, very much um, counter all of that now why uh, do so many um, people use CAS why you know there are so many different softwares out there to choose from so, you know, why learn to touch up with CAS? What makes CAS different? And how can CAS actually help uh, impact um, a, a student? So, yes, there are lots of softwares out there. CAS, we've listened, we've taken into account what uh, people are saying to us, and student safety is paramount. So, you know, we are members of the ICO.org and we adhere to all this rules and reg regulations, we're fully GDA, GDA compliant, um, and we take that very, very seriously. Um, our courses, all of them, do not contain any distractions, pop-ups, and we do not solicit by, by email or any otherwise. Um, so for example, you know, a lot of uh, software out there will have advertising popping up all the time, which you as a, as a teacher or um, Senko will not have any control of. As I said, all our student data is protected, never shared, and we've got our privacy and data policy on our website for literally for everyone to view. We won't be compromised on that, um, and that, that's set in stone. All our courses, lastly, are secured via our um, uh, secure link on our website. You can see the padlock symbol. So the challenges. So um, how does CAS differ? Well. Our course covers for visual disturbances via our specialized preference screen, cognitive limitations via the proven accelerated learning teaching method, which out of interest was uh, passed and approved by the Open University, where there's a white paper on our website to, to showcase that. And we've just recently developed new challenge modules which cater for short term working memory issues, um, which has just only been implemented in the course within the last three to six months. And obviously, you know, difficulties with spelling. So uh, again, recently up, um, integrated is an upload feature whereby teachers can actually upload spellings of the week 
uh, and problematic words. So, you know, if you've got various groups, say, for example, an SEN group or group one or, or a, a, a higher group, you can actually zone off spellings for each di different group. So um, you tend to find with children with, with dyslexia where they're transposing letters or getting things the wrong way around. We want to train students to recognize words by sight. So when the, they see it, they actually type it. They don't actually have to think about it. The, the fingers that have automatically moved there. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to show you on, on uh, a natural course um, these these various uh, preferences. So I'm I'm actually sh showcasing this on the desktop version. So I'll I'll, I'll flip between uh, the student, uh, the primary edition, and the secondary edition as well. Now, you as a, a as a teacher would actually get both editions in your teacher's pack. I won't go into the admin uh, panel and how to use that, but um, I'm, I'm always available. We do webinars and, you know, be more, more than happy to showcase that for you. So basically, uh, we worked with the Dyslexia Research Trust for about two years in, in up, upgrading and developing the, the software. And uh, we, we really wanted to cater for children with uh, visual disturbances. And, you know, it ranges from Mears Erlin, where it's been diagnosed, to obviously undiagnosed. And, you know, this has now become part of our mainstream course. We had feedback from some Senkos and some teachers saying that they'd never realized that students hadn't been, you know, were dyslexic or, or suffer from visual disturbances. So <clears throat> because of those, those first few uh, comments, we actually started to integrate it into all the courses. And we've had such fantastic feedback that literally it's, it's all our courses from uh, schools to downloads to education to university to business all open with this preference screen. It really has made a difference. So as I said, this was developed with the Dyslexia Research Trust. If, if you're not aware who they are, the Dyslexia Research Trust are the, the people who develop the, the yellow filter and the blue filter, which stabilizes letter movement. And literally all their research <clears throat> has gone into the CAS uh, software. So from everything from line spacing, letter sizes to everything, it's now been incorporated in. Uh, the default setting out of interest is set to 80% of users. So the majority of people, the whole idea is to be able to read this text in the box here. Should you be able to read that text, simply click begin course. But for the 10, 15% of, of students who can't, literally all they need to do is go through the preference and um, uh, correct it un un until they can. So we've got obviously the blue, which stabilizes letter movement, yellow, which minimizes blurring. These are the colors, simply minimize white screen glare. And in, in recently, we've also got a no filter option because some of the typefaces which have actually been licensed for the course actually work best in a white background. So it's just down to user preference. But what we have done uh, is a lot of our older students actually do get diagnosed with Mears Erlen. So we do have a customized feature which has now been built in and on a mac i'm sorry i'm demonstrating on a mac but on a pc you can actually put in your rgb reference number but on a mac simply uh, go into the course and literally select your uh, filter color we've got a choice an uh, option of uh, font colors uh, sorry you can change your font color for for a good strong contrast and then we've got a selection of typefaces which can be um, selected. So each user will have a, a preferential typeface. It's set to Vedana as basis, which is what we all use. But we do have Lexi Readable and Open Dyslexic in there, which have been licensed for the course as well. We've, we've only got two font sizes, a large and an even larger. Um, so um, minimum face, I believe, is 21 points up to uh, 24 points. And then we go one step further because the, the course actually has an online um, keyboard at, at all times. So as you possibly know, a lot of uh, dyslexic users will choose a keyboard which has got uh, white letters on a black keyboard. So we obviously have uh, black on white as keys as well, but we've actually gone one further. So whatever filter color is chosen uh, can actually be uh, chosen to appear uh, on, on the online keyboard. What I'm going to do is, uh, well, 
uh, I'll show you shortly. So once the user can read that information comfortably, all they do is click begin course and all those uh, preferences are, are filtered through to the course. If for any reason they, they're unhappy or, or they feel, oh, that's not quite right, all they do is click change preferences, come back here and, and reset. I'll keep it to default for the purposes of this uh, demonstration, uh, but you know, please, uh, more than welcome to um, discuss that later if you'd like. We do sell the course into the US uh, as well as obviously the UK, but your users should just pick up the um, UK keyboard. We've got a further accessibility screen here. Um, and this is for, uh, we've got a CAS with sound option, which is the recommended. Uh, and we've incorporated into that uh, a toggle button so you can switch off in case you get interrupted or in case you don't have headphones. We've got a text only version for the hearing impaired, which is 100% uh, complete. And we've also got an audio descriptive for the visually impaired. Now the audio descriptive does include um, speaking keys. So when you press your, your keys on the keyboard, it actually sounds out the, the letter which you've, uh, which you've pressed. We are actually just so that you're aware in uh, development with a, a, a bespoke VI ed edition, which we're working with the Thomas Pocklicken Trust uh, to, to uh, develop. So that is something which we're, we're proud to say we're, we're, we'll be looking at for a launch at some point next year. So if I just click CAS with sound, and I'll promptly turn the sound off. Uh, excuse me, stopping my emails uh, coming in. Uh, but as you can see uh, here, we've got, uh, this is the, the standard user interface. So it's presented in a very, very simple fashion, uh, just in five modules. And literally all we need to do is to uh, tell our students to start at the top module and work through each in order. Now they don't really take long. Uh, the flying start module, which is the first module, is literally really short. Each of these modules takes two to three minutes, but it's really important because it explains about the navigational tool. It, it explains about uh, the shortcuts, for example, using the forward and backward arrow on your keyboard uh, rather than using your mouse. And then there's also one module, which is really, really important. And we actually uh, integrated this at the request of uh, City and Guilds. And uh, it was you know, not sufficient enough to just teach typing skills. We also need to teach individuals how they should be sitting at the computer, um, how they should position their screen and the, the height from the, um, the, the floor and the keyboard. And this has been really quite important. And again, it only just takes literally not even two minutes, but it's, it's, a, it's a module which once the user has gone through, then they really don't need to come back again. And um, if I then just come out of that section. So we then go into the basics. Now the basics is it's the most important module and that's where we teach the, the student how to touch type. Now our software is very different to other, other uh, typing tutors out there in that we teach on phrases. Now the phrases, some of them are a little bit bizarre, but please bear in mind, they've been scientifically structured. CAS does have a, a, a motto, which you know, will teach you to touch type in 90 minutes, but that is uh, designed for young adult learners who are um, probably 15, 16 plus, or have a real uh, desire to actually learn quickly. Uh, the method was developed with huge investment from 3i, and it was then tried and tested by the Open University, and they were so impressed with it, they actually deployed it to all 100,000 students for over 14 years. So, it, so we've got the white paper on the website and, you know, and the proof that it uh, really does work. Now, the way the method works, as I mentioned earlier, was, is, is a method based on brain balance. So we're actually teaching both sides to work symmetrically and simultaneously. So if my jive teaches the first two fingers and the thumbs of both hands at the same time, we then move on to the other phrases, which are progressions and bring in other keys. So as you're, you're all aware, we're very, very dexterous with our first two fingers and our thumbs, which is why we start with if Mike jives. So if I quickly just go into the first module. Um, so this is the navigational tool for the uh, junior uh, school edition. It's a slightly different um, for the um, secondary edition. But if you click on the beak, it repeats what's been said. Uh, left obviously to go back, right to go forward or to walk out of the course. So if I just move forward, 
Uh, this is the first phrase. It's the course is a narration. So literally the student just needs to listen to the narrator. Obviously a text box popped up there. That's because I've got the sound actually off at the moment. Um, so basically this is the standard user interface. The, the, uh, which is how the, the course actually appears throughout the uh, throughout all the learning modules. As I mentioned, it is a um, uh, it is a, it, it's interactive. So excuse this popping up here. It always uh, seems to do that when I've had the uh, application open for a while. So please excuse that. So the the, the, the course is laid out with two screens at the front. Uh, the typing area and the demo area. Literally all we need to do into the typing area is to type what's been said or spoken of which is appearing in the demo area. The first few screens off uh, if my jive are interactive so the narrator will explain to the student how to um, key that character in and then the student will copy what the narrator has just said. As you can see the uh, typing window opens immediately and this was done in consultation with assessors uh, to cater for students with ADHD. Original CAS, uh, you needed to listen to the uh, narrator first before this window would open. But the, the difference between kids of nowadays to kids of 20 years ago is they're born with literally with phones or computers in their hands. So they're very anxious to, to, to progress. But saying that the audio still does play in the background. There is built in a key guide into this keyboard. So for example, if the student is unsure at any time which character to press, uh, they literally tap on their keyboard and uh, the hand will display which uh, key they should uh, press. Clicking back onto the uh, keyboard will return them to the exact same position on the, on the course where they left off. The, um, User interface guide also contains the navigational tool at all times. You can progress through backwards or forwards to, to uh, redo a particular model, mo module or section and clicking on the beak will repeat that particular section. We have the question mark, which is a help menu bar, which explains uh, at all times what is going on. Sound on and off to toggle between um, audio or text only. A progress bar at the bottom to show how far you are through this particular model, module and also a slow-mo button. Now originally CAS was only uh, d delivered in slow mode option whereby the user had to listen to the uh, narrator speak. We've left that on there because a lot of Senkos still use that uh, feature for some of the really disadvantaged learners. So uh, th that has proven to be still uh, a valuable asset so we've left it on there. So as we progress through the course, uh, you can notice um, we're building up this phrase here. Now, the important thing to make uh, everyone realize is with CAS, as opposed to other softwares, is you can actually learn through uh, making mistakes. So, oh, I think I've uh, locked myself out. Please bear with me. Sorry for that technical hitch. Right, okay, so let me just move forward. So CAS has been developed so that you can, you can actually learn through making mistakes. Now, this is really important because uh, from all perspectives, if you continually wrapped on your knuckles, then uh, it, it actually becomes quite disheartening. And the, the reason we were selected by um, initially by City and Guilds and more recently by Open Awards, they absolutely love the fact that all the learning modules are just that. You don't need to pass a badge or you don't need to pass a certain uh, word per minute to progress on to the next module. They literally are all learning. However, you know, what we're trying to do is with these learning modules is to build uh, muscle movement in our fingers and to build dexterity. Uh, it's only in all the um, actual testing modules that we enforce muscle memory uh, so you know you have to key the right character uh, before you will be allowed to progress on so um, that is a, another factor which makes CAS very very different to a lot of the other products actually out there so I'm going to come out of that so basically each, each of these modules lasts literally 15 to 20 minutes that's all it takes 
Um, now, what we do is we encourage senkos and teachers to, you know, usually there, there's a time span which uh, is, is allowed for within classrooms. So if each of these is 15 to 20 minutes, we give lesson plans. So we suggest break this down to the child's attention span, uh, maybe one uh, phrase per week uh, with, you know, um, practice within it, within the week on each module. So, or, you know, if, if the students, we, we tend to find that schools, the, the reason schools like it is because, you know, obviously children can progress through at different uh, speeds. So if we, we've just been uh, taken on by a, 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 a number of schools in uh, Holland. And what they, they've noticed is, is that the children's, uh, children obviously are of varying abilities. So some will have literally were on baggy hat when others were still on, for example, just finishing Mike, if Mike jived. So, you know, that, that is one good flexible aspect of CAS. Children are, are allowed to progress. So as I mentioned, these learning modules are just that. However, in all the testing modules, uh, one does need to type in exactly what is actually seen. Um, what I'll do is I'll put the sound on. But I'm, I'm making a few mistakes on purpose, I'd like to say. Um, and then once, once you've actually gone through that, the, 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 the software will actually tell you uh, at what point, you know, wh which characters you're, you're having issues with or which fingers. And then you can either go back to the basics and practice on those uh, particular uh, phrases or actually just carry on. So I'm just going to carry on uh, and the sound off again. And I'll move on to the just do it. So, so theoretically now the students have actually learned finger position and they're starting to build muscle memory with, uh, with, 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 with the fingers. So, so this things are starting to gradually get moving. Now, the important thing is, is to enhance that, to continue that, to develop uh, and really um, get that muscle memory figured in so that it, it, it you know it just doesn't leave them what we want to do now is we want to automatize it we want it to we want students to start recognizing words by sight and it's at that point where touch typing really does come into it, its own so the just do it module um oh no sorry this is where i'm going to flip if you don't mind so i'm going to flip to the adult um edition um which just so, so, so you're aware is, is it's it's the only desktop version which we've um, updated the others are all due to be updated shortly so if we go into the just do it module we've developed a new challenge module so this has really really uh, been proven to be a huge hit with our with our, i'll be honest with you with our senkos because obviously they're more responsible in the schools for our software and what it what we've done is for the course now and this is uh, live through all our online courses, we have the uh, ability to actually add vocabulary. We've also licensed licensed text to speech software. So all the vocabulary which is actually added into the course uh, is now spoken back to the student. So if I go into the challenge module, challenge one focuses on the keys used in the first two phrases, challenge two, the third and the fourth fra fra phrases, and challenge three on the final phrase. As I mentioned earlier, if the, you have an online uh, course, you can add vocabulary specific to that to, to each group, and a fourth challenge module will actually appear for those students. Now, the reason that this has proven so pop popular is because we were actually asked by assessors about three years ago uh, for students with short working memory. So, you know, something which they would have learned two weeks ago, they've forgotten this week. Now, these challenge modules have been developed so they can almost supersede uh, the uh, touch typing, the basics module. But, you know, obviously we advise to do the basics and then come through to the challenge module. And each challenge, as I said, we, we just give a quick little run through, sitting correctly with the fingers and the home keys. So I've got the sound off at the moment. So each word is presented three times. Uh, the narrator will, will actually speak the word first uh, and then the, the student will actually type the word and th they'll be doing that three times. So it's a uh, selection from a vocabulary data bank of about 500 words and obviously what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the student to recognize those words by sight and to 
get them touch typing. Now there is a timer uh, on there, so it's been set to encourage but not discourage. But in your admin back office, you can actually change that timer. So you can increase it or decrease it however you feel uh, uh, in terms of the group you're using. Uh, we have the ability to hide the keyboard, online keyboard, so that the, the students are just literally looking up at the screen only at the, the, the screen. And obviously we can flip between challenge one, two, three using the navigation tool. Out of interest, this is the navigation tool used on the secondary school edition, which is what I'm showcasing here. And obviously if there was a challenge fourth module, uh, then it, it would actually show up here as well. So that is something which has been really, really important uh, from a development point of view, uh, which is which has really lifted our um, our whole um, um, the, the whole light of the CAS course to to the the school's network, and the rest teaches the shift numbers and punctuation keys, and lastly speed builder. Uh, this is a really quite important. This is where we, we build speed and accuracy because obviously in all the other modules, they're pretty much the learning modules. So, you know, we don't want to dishearten, we want to encourage, but it's at these points that if I start to type now, as you can see, it's not moving forward because um, I haven't keyed in the right letter. So, so this is how we actually enforce um, muscle memory. And it's only with practice that the student will uh, develop automaticity. Series of uh, 20 phrases, and that's really important because that's what's deemed sufficient, not uh, too much, because obviously we don't want the students uh, to get tired with their hands, uh, but enough to actually build muscle memory. So we, we recommend them using the speed builder section uh, really on a daily basis. All the results from the Speed Builder section are put in the My Results uh, section, which also then goes into Teachers Admin Panel so they can see exact progress of how their students are doing. Full user guides are given for all students, but the course is very, very, very basic. Uh, you know, there's a huge amount of technology and research which has gone into this, but the important thing for CAS is for it to be displayed in a very simple manner. So, in effect, that's CAS. Um, that's the, the touch typing course. I won't go into all the back office and the admin panel. That uh, I'd be more than happy to do for you on a one-to-one -one basis uh, or on a group basis, uh, really not an issue. But something which, which I'm really proud to, to say um, on, on, on today's talk with uh, Abigail. Uh, Abigail has known about this for a while. We've been pushing for uh, getting touch typing qualifications on a national basis for for, for several years, uh, there has never really been a national uh, touch typing qualification. Uh, we were approached by Open Awards, or, um, I think it was two, just over two years ago, and it's taken an awful long time to get there, but we actually finally did. It, it's only been launched this week, and you all are the first to know about it from, from us. Uh, obviously, we post it on our uh, social media channels, but th this is the first presentation where, where I've actually mentioned it. We're really immensely proud of it. And um, that, you know, we've agreed with Open Awards because we've partnered with them. We're conducting all the uh, examinations and testing through our uh, um, servers, which are obviously here in the UK. They're really happy with the, and have confidence in the robustness of the system, our GDPR, etc. So, so we're, we're, we're really over the moon about this. And and really why this is so important is, is one, there's no age limit on this. Um, two, your, you know, teachers can take this assessment within their own uh, testing se sessions within their schools. Uh, all they have to do is sign a declaration and confirm that it'll be done to, to normal testing conditions. And the important thing is all students will actually get a qualification which will add to their education record. And this, this is something which was developed with SEN students in mind. Uh, we're, we're completely aware, uh, Sherilyn, who is, is a director of the company, she used to work an awful lot with children in, in the community. And achievement is, is something which is very, very uh, difficult for some of these students. And we developed these, course, the, 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 these qualifications so that they can achieve them. Every student gets uh, three 
um, attempts. And it has been designed so that, uh, you know, we give all the, uh, the notes, we give all the training. Uh, and when the teacher is ready, they can decide uh, whether the student goes on to a level one or two. Level one is, a, is an entry level with a touch typing of 25 words per minute. And there's obviously a, a bank of questions, 16, which the, uh, the pass rate is 50%. And we're talking, you know, questions such as where are the home keys, uh, which, you know, which finger would press a certain character, you know, some all uh, information which has gone through within the revision nodes. Uh, and level two has a pass rate of 35 words per minute, which is obviously more advanced. And why 35 words per minute? Because 35 words per minute is the tipping point where you're using literally all your fingers and thumbs. Level one only covers certain aspects of the keyboard, obviously all the A to Z capitals, full stops, etc. But level two covers the full keyboard, including all punctuation as well. So that is something which we're really, really proud of. Uh, we've got a few offers on at the moment with that. So if that interests you, please just do email us. Um, uh, obviously, I'm not Sharon, I'm keen, but if you can take uh, Sharon's uh, email address and, you know, this whole uh, webinar is CPD accredited as well. So if you do want a CPD certificate for it, please just uh, drop Sharon in an email and she'll, she'll uh, let you have that. Obviously, we do free trials for schools. Um, so, you know, just click onto the education section of our website, she wish to, to do that. Uh, if you'd like a personal one to one on uh, more aspects of CAS, please reach out to us. You know, we find literally it's, 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 it's crazy. 90, 95% of the teachers who, who request a demo actually go on to purchase the CAS because they can, they can actually see the benefits they'll make to their students. Um, you know, we just, we need you to understand how CAS works and how to integrate CAS within your environment. But Abigail, that's me done in terms of uh, presenting the, um, the course and the software. So um, if uh, we can turn back to you and turn back to any questions, um, I'm, 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 I'm free. I'm doing that. I think I'm unmuted again. Fantastic. Keen, I really enjoyed. Wattification is um, amazing because it means you've got something to give those students who perhaps aren't taking their full suite of GCSEs and we need to give them something to, to sit alongside it. It gives them something. It means they can leave school with something that's valuable and useful and can take them into the future. Um, Gavin typed, do we think that touch typing can help SEND pupils? And we were hoping somebody was going to reply to it. I replied to him and said, I think it's useful for SENCOs. <laughs> I think SENCOs need to have a touch typing okay. course so we can, so we can type our uh, reports much faster. Sally is just typing, so I'm going to wait a second right. and see what question she comes up with. Okay, I'm just going to, I think so, Gavin said if you switch to camera. He has switched camera, I think. So Sally said, do you think this is suitable for primary SEND pupils? So Keen, do you want to answer that? What age group? Yeah, sure. Uh, right. Well, we, we tend to start, uh, we don't actually envisage uh, learning to touch type. Um, oh, sorry, I'll just turn off my screen share. Uh, we don't actually envisage uh, learning uh, for children under six or seven. I mean, we've got a lot of Montessori schools uh, in the US, especially using CAS, uh, we, we actually feel that that actually is possibly a little bit too young. But, you know, because children are still developing, their hands are still developing, they can't, you know, reach the full extent of keys. So, so we actually see that the perfect age being probably seven to 10, maybe towards the latter end. And the, the way the CAS course was, was uh, presented to schools, we actually gave two versions, a junior and a secondary. And what we tended to find was the junior version was too babyish and the kids felt it was too childish with the junior CAS bird. So we actually dropped that. So we now made the junior CAS, the adult CAS bird, and we've actually dropped in the adult edition for the secondary edition. So that it becomes so a, a little bit more, you know, cause children don't like to be think, you know, people can think that they're, 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 they're too young in, in what they've been presented with. So, um, but yeah, I, I would say, you know, we, we've got, uh, probably uh, a 25%, 30% split of all the schools which use CAS are for primary school. There you go, Sally. I, I hope that that helps. 
yeah I, so when I first met you our third son was nine I think and you gave me a, a program to, to play with to work with and we, we got him on it he does still remember some of them to be fair because we haven't practiced recently <laughs> but, uh, he's doing quite good um, so Katie said do students need to be supervised whilst doing it or is it something they can do independently Right, fantastic question, Katie. Katie, the whole course has been designed to be used independently. So, for example, all, I mean, you know, we've got hundreds and hundreds of schools using CAS, and literally, because it's all online, they can work at home or at school. Uh, the only place they might have need, potentially need a bit of help is with the preference screen to actually get the, the screen to their right um, to, to suit their, their visibility or their, for, for their own visual preferences. But to be honest with you, kids are so, you know, oh, they're, they're just fantastic, aren't they? They've, they've got no fear. You know, we're scared to press a button because we're scared we're going to break the, the, you know, the keyboard or the computer, whereas kids will just try. And, and what you've got to remember is the CADS program can't be broken. Well, I'm, I'm sure kids are, are always finding fantastic things to do. But, but generally, no, uh, just, you know, just tell them to start at the top and to work through each module in order and that's sufficient what we've done now with the challenge module it's it's really we don't be, believe in gaming uh, because you know gaming can be very distracting and prolong the learning and it doesn't actually register sometimes with that automaticity which is why we don't actually promote gaming but the challenge module what that does is because they see the word they hear the word and then they type the word they're actually understanding what they're doing so and they start to recognize words uh, which are popping up from them in the screen. And now uh, what the Senkos have come, or, you know, the, the, let me not say only Senkos, because it's teachers as well, have come back on uh, the, the new Challenge 4 module where they can import their own vocabulary. And that's been an absolute resounding su success because, uh, you know, they can drop in their uh, spellings of the week, et cetera, et cetera. And, and we've been really enthused by the response we've had. So. You know the, the fact that we're getting the response is fantastic but but what we, we we do impress on all our teachers is please give us feedback because you know we want to produce a course which helps everyone in the classroom and really works and we can only do that when we get feedback and and you know unlike other uh, many other people we do listen or we try no you definitely listen you listened <laughs> when i said something so thank you for that um and i would say yes they can do it independently but you have to know the child so um our son who was doing it yes he was fine with it independently i know that if i had given it to some of my scn students i may have been better off supervising them doing it certainly in the first few stages um and my students with dyspraxia i would have been um well placed to kind of just check that their fingers are in the right place because although that image is on the screen to tell them where to put their fingers it's that case of just double checking it for them and reassuring before letting them do it. But it's knowing your students. Yeah. Sally said, thank you. We know uh, out of interest, Abigail. I, I was just going to say, Abigail, out of interest, after you actually made mention of that comment, um, I think it was now two years ago, what we've done, because that is something which was echoed by other people. So what we've done since then is before the start of every module, there's a, a narrator will just quickly brief are you sitting in the right position with your fingers on the home keys? I think you may have seen that briefly. And yeah. really that's that's come across through, through a comment which was made inadvertently, which was really taken on board because it absolutely made sense. Yeah. So thank you for that. <laughs> no, you're very welcome. Um, Sally says, thank you. <laughs> we know some of the children will need to be able to touch, uh, yeah, able to type for secondary and it's getting the balance right between working on fine motor handwriting and introducing them to typing. This is where I kind of have to sit slightly on the fence because the group know that I've just written a um, teacher's pack on dysgraphia and it's all to do with fine motor skills and handwriting. But in there, I do talk about the fact that, you know, we're still going to have to do a little bit of handwriting in our lives. I picked a pen up a minute ago because my screen had got lots of things on it and I couldn't type. But most of our yeah. children, we, we live in a digital world. They're going to be typing. So yes you're right it is that balance of the two of them but if they're developing their fine motor skills with their their fingers doing this that actually helps to strengthen their fingers and when they go to pick the pen up they've yeah. actually got a bit more strength in there to yeah. support that handwriting as well 
So I don't see the two things as being separate. I see the two as complementing each other. No, you're you're one hundred percent right, Abigail. And and, and out, out of interest, when we launched the product, we actually launched it in Malaysia a few years ago. And amazingly, in Singapore, they don't teach children how to write anymore. I think that's quite bizarre. I mean, you know, I they, they actually put them straight onto a keyboard. I mean, it, it's incredible, isn't it? I can't imagine. Maybe that's that, why but... the English system is the best. <laughs> <laughs> I really can't imagine that one, but okay, fair enough. Um, anybody else got any questions? For Keith? Come on, you've got your chance to ask him now. Let's see if anybody else starts typing. Touch typing skills, you'd be faster typing. If yeah, you, they, if they you can be as hard. They can be as hard as they want. Be as hard on me as you want to, everyone. Oh yeah, some tricky <laughs> questions. Yeah, yeah. Gavin's doing this at me. The opposable thumbs for the. Uh, touch typing on the, the, the mobile phone the, the thumbs are quite good but the fingers <laughs> don't do much yeah uh, out of interest something else which which would be quite important to let everyone know is that we actually have a touch typing competition Ooh. now the, the importance of this can ne cannot be under understated or overstated because what the competition does is really get the competitive edge of the student into learning how to touch type so we do encourage all our teachers to to enter their students. It's a one touch entry. So it's, it's very, very easy, but you know, we need them to be happy to do it. Um, and it's free, you know, and they could win a free license for the next year. But, it, but the important thing is it really does encourage students to, to learn the skill. Absolutely. Now, Sorry everybody, no, no, it's fine. Everybody will know that when somebody asks in the group, can you recommend a touch typing program? And we, we get the usual answers, and my answer is always CasType. And I just want to explain why, because CasType is a paid product, and a lot of the ones that get um, you know, responded with are free products. Um, but there is a massive mm. difference between the two of them. And I, I'm one of those people who believes you, you pay for, you get what you pay for. And I think, you know, yes, Kaz, you do have to pay for it, but actually you're getting far more than you get from those free products that are out there because you've got the support of a team that know what they're doing, that they've done their research behind it. You've got that adaptability. They take on board what you're asking them to do. Um, you've now got a qualification that sits alongside it, which you're not going to get with whatever it's called, BBC Dance Mat, um, yeah. other than, you know, type printing off a certificate at the end, you're not going to get that from them. Um, and they're not going to respond to your feedback and, you know, where you say, oh, can you help us with this? They're not going to do that. Whereas a company like Has will do that. So that is why I will always support generally a paid for product than a free product a lot of the time, because I, I like I say, I believe that you get what you pay for. And in this case, you've got something that is helping students to develop a lifelong skill because it, it is important. Like I say, we're in a digital world and we're all moving on and the majority of the jobs in the next 20 years time are not going to be manual labor or using a pen. They're yeah. going to be sat in front of a computer screen typing. Uh, that's where we are. So yeah. any more questions from anybody? Well, we're going to let everybody go early today. We're not going to drag you all out for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas is coming. <laughs> Christmas is coming. So I have, I have somebody else who's just typing something. And Gavin's typing. Oh, well, Gavin's typing. Give them a minute. <laughs> Who's going to pop up first? So, oh, so P. Robinson, I'm not sure what the first name is, says, do we need one license per child? Right, so, so the, the way the licensing works is you can buy a single license or you can buy, they're, they're usually in bands, so 10 students, 25 students or 50 students. And the way the, 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 the system works is, you know, the, you'll buy an annual license and we would recommend you keeping that license with the child for the year. And what that does is it allows them to uh, progress at their own pace, come back to it and dip in and out. Now, the way the, the course, the way we price the course is, it's, it's, we'd like to think it's inexpensive uh, to 
uh, other uh, products in the market. We need to keep it uh, cost effective and all the research which we do gets reinvested. So for example, the SCN edition, which was developed three years ago, it's actually free within the mainstream, within the, the package price which you purchase. Uh, all the other editions which will be coming, the VI edition, etc. Again, all those will be free within the mainstream edition. So the important thing to realize is that every single purchase of the course funds future editions. So, uh, you know, a single user license is $24.95. A school's edition, uh, 10, uh, I think it's five user licenses, £75. Pounds. Uh, it's, it's all on the website. So uh, please just have a look. Um, and, you know, we, we, we do hope you feel that the price is inexpensive. That's how it's been designed. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think it's inexpensive for what it is. Um, and Gavin wants to know how you've all found the new setup that he's used tonight with the funny flushy spoons. <laughs> Who, uh, thank you to Keen for being our guinea pig and actually trialling this out and bearing with us. <laughs> they're not typing anything, Jay. I reckon they're all on Facebook. So when you go on Facebook, you'll have all the answers there. Oh, maybe. He's maybe. Just pulling faces at me, I'm Sally. Sally. Sally's going to. Sally's, Sally's, Sally's going to help me. Out. <laughs> Thank you, Sally. <laughs> She's going to say it doesn't all fit on the screen. Oh. <laughs> it's all gone crazy. It depends how you set your screen up. Like it fits on mine at the moment. I did That's have so to. I did have to resize it. <laughs> She's on team. She can't access Facebook in school. She's good there. Fantastic, Sally. S Sally, can you access YouTube from your school? <laughs> Sorry, I'm taking over, Keen. Now. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. You please do. Please do. <laughs> yeah. Just if anybody else types anything else while we're waiting. You need to know. <laughs> you need to know. You need to know. I do need to know. There we go. The thing I had is it, it's it's frozen a couple of times. On is, it, the day. is it freezing? Is it on Teams? It freezes a couple of times. Okay. Uh, she thinks so, but she'd have to check. Not okay. on the iPad, oh, yes. possibly on the laptop. Okay. Say again, Keen. I lost that. No, I was going to say. So, 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 are you doing it on Teams as well as on Facebook? So, at the now, moment, or? it is on Teams, it is on Facebook, and it is on YouTube. It went to all three at the same time. Wow, well done. <laughs> Very impressive. And we're, <laughs> and we're not on any of those. We're on something entirely different. <laughs> Sally, so Sally didn't notice any freezing, so it might be my network connection, Sally. And L Smith is typing. Is either going to tell us how the experience was or she's going to ask us about cast type. First time joining, very interesting. Teams is a bit jumpy. Thank you, Earl Smith. I, don't, I didn't think it was just me. Um, it does feel a bit jumpy today, but it could just be Teams because Teams does play up occasionally. Yeah. So, hey, hey. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Keen, thank you so much for joining us today and uh, sharing that information with us. Um, I think it was you know, really important for people to, to hear about that because, like I say, it, you've got something that's a little bit different to the other typing products that are out there and it now explains why i always say cast type when somebody asks that question uh they, they're not going to think i'm totally oh. insane anymore so thank you so much for joining <laughs> us. thank you to everybody else for joining us no as problem. well uh i do believe gavin has recorded this and this will be is it live streamed to the website as well dear? i forgot to say it that doesn't one. go to the website at the moment oh. the website's not working properly okay. but it will go live to the website as well for the members Okay. And I don't have to actually put anything up for YouTube. It's already on there. So you will see it as soon as we've finished. There you go. So if you want to watch a replay or keen, you want to go back and have a look at what you've just said, you can go and watch it on YouTube <laughs> straight away. Just hunt for Sensible <laughs> the channel and it is there for everybody. Thank you to everybody for joining us. Thank you, Sally. Thank you, P. Robinson. Thank you, L. Smith. And uh, thank you both the Valerys, which I'm hoping are two different Valerys and anybody else who's there as well, whose names I can't see. And we will see you hopefully tomorrow night for Paddy and Jim, who are actually Ant and Deck, or is it Ant and Deck are actually Paddy and Jim? Not really sure. With our exams, uh, access arrangements, okay. technology toolkit that they're going to talk about, which I'm really looking forward to. 
Thank you, everybody. Take yeah. care and have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thank everyone. You. Thank you, Abigail. Thank you. Thank Gavin. you. Thank You're you. welcome. Okay. Uh, stream is closed. Just got one person left in Teams, which is a second keen. He might have gone actually, he's frozen. Yep, Keen's gone, he's frozen. Okay, I 